Hey, big election over in Egypt, as you know. We talked about it the other day. Uh, A man from the Muslim Brotherhood, a terrorist organization, which has helped to spur and uh, spawn other terrorist organizations around the world, is now the uh, brand new president of Egypt. So what does it mean? I mean, does it mean that Egypt winds up like Iran? Does it? uh, Well, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it means. Congressman Fred Grandy uh, knows he is... uh, Covering this, he looks at these things on a regular basis now with the Center for Security Policy. And uh, most importantly, Wednesdays, he drops by with us. Fred, good morning. Salam alaikum, Jeff. Mm-hmm. How are you? It, it, it is Wednesday. Uh, are we all going to be saying that soon? Is that what you're saying? Well, actually, at the risk of sullying my reputation as the skunk at the family picnic or the harbinger of doom every Wednesday morning, I think I have some good news to report this morning. Really? Yes, even in the light of Mohamed Morsi's election, even in the light of rumors, which he is now denying that he has had uh, discussions with Iran and wants what he calls a new strategic balance with Iran, um, there is now, I think, an effort by specific members of Congress, five in particular, Michelle Bachman of Minnesota, Trent Franks of Arizona, Louis Gohmert of Texas, Tom Rooney of Florida, and Lynn Westmoreland of Georgia, to hold this administration accountable for their um, ongoing solicitation of the Muslim Brotherhood. They sent letters about two weeks ago to the various inspector generals, and one of them is a guy named Harold Geisel, who is the inspector general at State. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to know specifically, why is the Secretary of State allowing people like Tariq Ramadan, a well-known Muslim Brother leader, and the grandson of Hassan al-Banna, the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood, into this country, when the Bush administration said he shall not pass? And they went on to ask, uh, what is this ongoing engagement with the Muslim Brotherhood? So, at least we now have a stake in the ground that says, will you please answer some questions, okay? That's the good news. Now I have to revert to my personal. Oh, account. here we go. <laughs> All right. Well, the reason they're doing this, and this is, this is very important in light of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, election and the victory. You may be aware of this, but last week a group of Muslim Brother diplomats, wink, wink, nod, nod, mm-hmm. arrived in Washington. One of their delegation was a gentleman named Hani Noor el Din, who supposedly represented a party called the Building and Development Party. Well, that's a new name for uh, their organization, which is better known as Gamal al-Islamiyah, which is a designated foreign terrorist organization. And this guy, Jeff, wait for it, received a visa without even blinking an eye, walked in, met with high-ranking officials, both in Congress and at the administration, and even went so far as to say, hey, you know this guy you got in prison, Omar Abdel Rahman, known as the Blind Sheikh. Mm-hmm. He's one of our guys. Could you send him back to our, uh, our country, please? Wow. Continued those discussions. Oh, Ironically, wow. I, I had a conversation yesterday with uh, one of our senior fellows, uh, a woman named Cynthia Farahat, who is an escaped Egyptian, and it used to run a, a liberal party there. And she said it so happened she heard from one of her colleagues, a Coptic Christian who's trying to come to this country to attend a, a conference on Coptic solidarity. The same day Eldin got his visit, This guy was denied a visa by the U.S. Embassy in Egypt because they said, why do you need to go to a Coptic Christian conference? You're a Muslim. (laughs) So they denied his visa and essentially passed on this other guy. Now, this just in. Peter King has already written a letter to the Secretary of Homeland Security saying, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. But the Department of State, this is wonderful. A spokesperson named, I believe her name is Virginia or Victoria Newland, um, has said, this is why we're offering these kinds of visas. This is a quote. It's a new day in Egypt. It's a new day in a lot of countries across the Middle East and North Africa. So new political personalities are coming to light. We have more folks who want to come here, want to know us, want to learn about the United States, want to develop relations with us. We have the same interest with regard to them. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be my high neighbor? Salam alaikum, neighbor. Let's make the most of this beautiful day. I mean, can you believe this? Now, Fred, was that written on the back of a Hallmark card or a postcard? What is that? It's it's a, it's God. Well, that's it's... that's that's Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. I know, I know. I'm just a... I'm just I'm just saying this. This oh. is what I immediately thought of when I read this quote. Oh. This is an official quote from the State Department saying, yeah, we know they're terrorists. (laughs) By the way, Gamal Islamiyah, 
uh, is responsible for a massacre in Luxor in 1997 that killed 62 people. And if you go even further back, uh, in the early 80s, they combined with uh, Islamic Jihad to kill Anwar Sadat. And, of course, the guy behind that is Ayman al-Zawahiri. So right, this is right. not exactly a, um, a backbench organization. Wow. But I, the, 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 I guess I want to end on a good note here because it is, it is I think, well-timed that this uh, group of members of Congress are now saying, look, we want some answers to this. We're tired of just sitting back and letting you waive right. um, any kind of restrictions we put on you. Louis, Louis Gohmert said this. He said, for departments of this administration to continue meeting with such groups and agreeing to further bind our government agents charged with looking for enemies wanting to destroy us is at best foolhardy. That was before they issued the visa. So I'm hoping that we can begin to build a coalition of concerned members of Congress who say, hey, cut this out. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh you, know, you know how often you end one of these meetings? With, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, Fred, I'm pretty sure I begin most of them as well to say, what well, good. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I try to remain consistent for you. you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you you have delivered like nobody's business, my friend. I just report the news, okay? I don't make it. I know. I don't make it. I know. Well, listen, uh, as always, a tremendous report, and as always, uh, I think I thank you for the information. Well, uh, <laughs> shukran gidan. Uh, um, I, I, um, you know, I, I just have to say that the more I look at this administration's approach to Egypt, to Libya, to Tunisia, and now possibly to Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, if our enemies were actually sitting there advising them on how to do this, I don't think we would get much of a different result. Wow. I really have to say that. It's just, it's, it's astonishing to me. And of oh. course, you know, I, when Mrs. Fred and I confer on this, she always says, I told you so. I told you this a year ago. <laughs> and so I have to sit there and listen to this kind of retribution and know in my heart, you know what? I think she was probably right. We all know she was probably right. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Fred, I now, you've, now you've joined the other side, too. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, former Congressman Fred Grandy, great friend of this program. He's with us every Wednesday morning. Great insight. I'm telling you, there's nobody else. Uh, doing this sort of work that uh, that Fred is, he's with the Center for Security Policy now, uh, down in D.C. Just just great insight.